What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm in my studio in Sedalia, and today is an exciting day. I'm going to cover how to measure the size of a spore using a microscope with the camera and the software for a computer. So this is a really accurate way to measure the size of spores. Normally, you can use a micrometer with the ocular lens, um, but that's kind of subjective in my experience using the pixels on the computer and comparing them against the, uh, the field of view and using that to decipher the size of the spores is much more accurate. I will go ahead and show you guys how I prepare a wet slide. You can't just stick this on the microscope. You have to transfer those spores onto a slide and then we'll have a more accurate reading. So if you haven't seen our other videos yet on microscopy and mycology, go ahead and check out that playlist. There's lots of info, but this is actually how to decipher the size of a spore. So that is useful when you have a mushroom in question, you can use the spore size as one of the identifying factors. Also, when you're breeding mushrooms or just observing mushrooms from different regions, the size of the spore can vary. Um, in particular, the King's Trafaria can usually be between 20 to 30 micrometers. So we'll go ahead and measure these spores and I'll show you how to prep the slide and then I'll do the math at the end so that we can figure out the exact size the King's Trafaria spores. All right. All right, guys. So in order to prepare our slide, um, I do have this King's Trafaria spore print that I've been working off of um, a couple times, but that's okay. We're just going to take some spores from this region over here. So I have a sterile syringe, a sterile needle, a pipetter. We have concave glass slides. So these ones are really useful for doing wet slide prep. I have some sterile water here and some slide covers. So the first thing I'm going to do is just pull some water out of our jar and this is going to help lift the spores off of that petri dish and we'll be able to put it onto the slide. So I'll just put a few drops over here, kind of mix them around. I'm not really using this to transfer the spores. I like using this little pipetter. Okay, so now I'll get out a clean slide. And you want to make sure that the slide's oriented correctly. So this one has a little concave where the sample is going to sit. So I'm going ahead and grab some of these spores. And I'll just put them into the middle of that concave. And that should be plenty. And now I'm gonna grab some slide covers or just one slide cover. Let me set this down. Okay, and then the trick to not getting any air bubbles is just putting it at an angle and then dropping it on. And there we go. We have our slide prepared to measure the spores. All right, everyone. So now that we have our slide prepped, we're going to go ahead and put it under the microscope. So you just want to place it on the slide or the, the stage here and kind of clamp it into place. And I'll go ahead and open up the camera software. 
So if you're interested in getting one of these AM scopes, I'll post the link in the description below. I really, really like this microscope, how easy it is to use. All right, so I've got the software opened up. Um, if you're using a Mac, you might have to bypass the, uh, the launch pad app. So open the software directly from downloads and you'll be able to get to this menu. And then we could use this software to find our spores. So when you're searching for your spores initially, it's important to start on the 4X objective lens. So that is giving you the widest field of view. So we can scan around using this little lever here, but you can see clearly on the screen that there is tons of spores present on that wet sample. So I'm gonna find a region that doesn't have a lot of clumped spores so that we can measure a single spore. Now, this microscope's really nice because it should be calibrated so that as you increase your objectives, you shouldn't have to focus too much. So now we're on the um, the 10x objective. So we have a 10x and a 10x, so that's 100 times magnification. And you can see the spores really clearly. However, if you want to be the most accurate as possible, it's good to go one step further. And we will go all the way to the 40x lens. Since this is a wet slide, um, you shouldn't use the oil immersion. The, the concave feature of that slide is really good. So that 40x, we're going to get a really good reading of the spore size here. So you can see we've got a spore kind of like oblong shape. But we're going to go ahead and use the software to draw a line of the field of view. And then we're going to draw a line on the spore itself. And then we're going to do the ratio of the pixels from the field of view compared to the pixels of the line of the spore. And then we're going to figure out the size of the spore using the pixels on the camera, which is a really accurate method. Okay, so I'll go ahead and kind of flip the camera back and forth and go through the math on the whiteboard. And we'll figure out if we have a spore that's between 20 and 30 microns, which would be indicative of the Strafaria reguso annulata. All right, so I'm going to start off just by focusing in at 10x, and I'm just scanning for some spores that are kind of dispersed out, not, not too many clumped up, so I can take a good measurement. So it seems like a pretty good area. All right, I think this is a good spot here. So next, I'm going to try to focus in on 40X. Whoops, that's a 4X. So I'll go back from four all the way down to 10, and then from 10 to 40. So this here is at 40, and now I'm just gonna take a measurement of the field of view using the line tool. So I'm just going to draw that line and now I'm going to draw another line across the diameter of the spore. So I'm just using the line tool and connecting end to end. And then after that, I can use the screenshot feature to calculate the pixels of the line. So now I'm just going across the field of view and I captured a screenshot. And then I'm going to capture a screenshot of the diameter of the spore so you can see here, I got the diameter. 
now I am going to pull up the info on my screenshot and then under the size of the pixels you can see it's 1298 for the field of view and then for the size of the spore it's going to be 76 by 80 pixels and then we can use that to calculate the size all right everyone so i will walk you through how to find the exact size of the spore so we used the the camera software on the computer to find out the length of the field of view um, using the line draw feature and then i used that same line feature to measure the length of the spore but the spore was kind of positioned weird on that slide ideally you would just take a measurement of a spore that was exactly parallel with the line that you used for the field of view but i wanted to explain if you had an oblong spore or maybe an asco spore that's kind of weirdly shaped you can still measure that using the Pythagorean theorem in order to figure out how big the field of view is um, you can use this formula here so d equals f over m and d is the diameter of the field of view so that is what you're seeing when you observe down the ocular lens the f is the field of view so that's going to be the little number on your ocular and then m is magnification so that is the number that's going to be on your objective lens in this case the f is going to be 10 because it's a 10x ocular lens and then m is going to be 40 because this is under the 40x objective lens so once again the diameter of the field of view is f over m and we are going to be using a 10x ocular and a 40x objective lens. So I hope that makes sense. I kind of went through the math already. So if we follow this formula here, you're going to get 10 over 40, which that equals 0.25, and that's in millimeters. So the 10x over the 40x gives you a 0.25 millimeter field of view. So now we can use ratios to convert the, the pixels on the computer, which we're using to measure, into millimeters. The pixel of the line that I took on the, uh, the software was 1,298 pixels from one end to the other for the field of view. And then the pixel from the spore, which it was just a screenshot of that line, was 76 by 80. So we're going to have to do a little math to get the hypotenuse of that square that we took. So this is, imagine the spore being right there. So that line across, we're trying to figure out the length of that line so we can use a ratio to figure out the size of the spore. Okay, so 76 by 80, um, we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 76 squared plus 80 squared, and then you take the square root of that. So that gives us 110. So now we know that this line here was 110 pixels. The whole field of view was 1,298 pixels. So now we can figure out our ratio to get the final size of the spore. So we're gonna do 1,298 over 0.25 millimeters. So this is 1,298 pixels is going to equal 0.25 millimeters because we already figured out the field of view. And then it's going to be 110 pixels is how many millimeters? So we'll do a little math here. It's going to be 1298x equals 27.5. And then we're gonna take 27.5 
divide that by 1298 and you get 0 0.021 millimeters. So we can convert that over to micrometers and we get 21 micrometers. So that does verify that these are Kingstrophaeria. They're often between 20 to 30 micrometers in size and we got 21 micrometers. So it's a little bit on the small side, but that is how you figure out the size of the spore, which is really important in identifying wild mushrooms or if you have any mushrooms in question, it's a really simple, but kind of, um, you know, mathematical way to measure your spores. And that way you don't need a micrometer. You don't need the, uh, the objective lens with the line, which it's pretty subjective at that point. I like using the microscope with the camera because it's very precise. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. Check out our playlist, Microscopy and Mycology. There's going to be a lot of microscope videos moving forward. I'm super stoked that I finally got my hands on a microscope and I can film these videos. So give us a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions, put some questions in the comments section below. I know it's a little bit of, you know, complex math, but it's just algebra and we're just using ratios to figure out the size of a spore based on the pixels of a computer. All right, until next time, much love.